Shake that ass over, let that coochie breathe. Shake that ass, bitch. Shake that ass with me. So I figured I was going to start with a very bad joke. I can't even get it out. Why is it that I always have dislikes whenever I post a video? Because I be making you hoes mad. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Breakdown, where we talk about everything cars, news, and reviews. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So, of course, the automotive world is on absolute fire, and there have been many things that have been dropped in the last couple of weeks, and there is nothing short of impressiveness and delight that comes from the automakers around the world. So, Porsche has just released their all-new Macan EV, which is the second generation of their most infamous and best-selling product on the market. Now, this particular particular one is going to be significantly different as it uses a completely different powertrain and uses a completely set a completely different set of quality pieces and components to make it the perfect driving machine not the ultimate driving machine that is reserved for BMW but in this particular episode we are going to explore the Porsche Macan EV and how critical it could be for the Porsche future so with that being said stick around and stay tuned because you are now watching the breakdown and, and, and laugh at my jokes, please. I work hard on those. Thank you. So getting into it, the Porsche Macan was just released on January 25th. According to Porsche, this is their first step into EVs as back in 2022, Oliver Bloom noted that he was going to focus and try to move the brand into the direction of electric with the exception of the 911. The 911 is legendary to the Porsche legacy, but this all new Macan EV is a representation of the direction that Porsche is trying to go into. Now this is not their first EV as that is the Taycan that was introduced back in 2018 2019 and the Taycan has sold over 300,000 units to date making it an absolute success. As of 2022 they noted that they would be trying to move 80% of their entire fleet toward the electrification route by 2030 like I said leaving the 911 and so this is their first attempt and down in Atlanta they have the Atlanta Motorsport Roadway where basically Porsche gives you an experience to be able to test drive a car and if you have never done it, I strongly encourage it as Porsche is headquartered in Atlanta. I personally got a chance to drive the Taycan about three years ago. And when I tell you I was geeked, I had a good ass time. But back to the Macan. So the Macan is uh, really interesting in the way that basically we as the consumers have bought it. So the Macan was a derivative of the Cayenne and basically supposed to be entry point as many SUVs, especially after the housing crisis of 2008, most of the SUVs were super expensive, even though they're heavily discounted and just honestly way too big. So the Cayenne was the entry point and that is due to the legacy of the X3 as well as the CRV and RAV4, which have made their own mainstays in the consumer market. The Macan is the one that you really want if you were in the market for an absolutely sporty SUV. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is that this was a delayed debut for the Porsche Macan because they were supposed to drop this couple of years ago but you know supply chain coronavirus and all those other good things happen so of course it would be that we would not get it on time but that's not really the real issue here the real issue is is that the Porsche moniker is very very important to the automotive world as it sets the pedigree for many of us racing enthusiasts and car enthusiasts alike and so the Porsche Macan needs to take his time being the best seller that's like half assing on a three series i would not encourage it <laughs> and so this architecture is significantly different that is as it is perpetuating the ppp architecture which is the premium platform electric architecture developed by both audi and volkswagen and the entire group to basically make it more suitable and basically develop between the audi Volkswagen and Porsche group to pretty much give you the most dynamic experience possible with electrification in mind. And so this leads to a significantly better chassis and better rigidity, but also giving the finest engineering coming out of Deutschland. And so this is going to be the make or break for Porsche. In terms of battery and charging capacity, you can get basically, this has over 
450 kilowatts worth of energy and over a thousand newton meters of torque and so this is going to be the point where porsche is really going to show us what it can do with their architecture aside from the Taycan, and the Taycan is expected to be redesigned soon the real cool thing about porsche is is like rolls royce they don't really change but they evolve their cars and so this is only the second generation of the macan primarily because they don't change their cars very often so from 2014 up to recently which would be 2024 you would see that a lot of the macan remains unchanged except for some minor tweaks now this particular one is very much pedigreed porsche Mm, I'd buy it. I am more so a person of Japanese technology, but I also adore the Germans whenever they do something. And the Macan gives you a really, really good packaging for what it's worth. And most of the battery capacity is really placed in a very pure engineerish way. So much so that we are expecting, and this is alleged, don't crucify me, but we're expecting this to rain from 10 to 20 minutes of charge time from 20% to 80% battery capacity which in the electric world is amazing because electric cars, if you don't have a house, take a lot of time. <laughs> so this is gonna be one of the biggest groundbreaking things for Porsche as many of the electric vehicles that has been the biggest drawing complaint is that it just takes too long. The other thing is, is that in far, as far as technology goes, there isn't much technology to be had. The car does start at $80,000 and that is very, very cool considering that many of the cars of this same degree cost significantly more even though the macan is supposed to be the entry level a porsche is a porsche baby don't ever get it up the macan 4 and the macan turbo are both the trends that this will come in and so the macan 4 starts at eighty thousand four hundred fifty dollars whereas the macan turbo had a starting price of one hundred six thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars the other thing is is that this car also uses sustainable materials and the seats are not actually leather they're leather free Retain, retainable, sustainable, whatever you want to call it, it's basically not leather, it's leather, baby. I'm okay with it. I mean, in many cases, if you didn't know, a lot of cars don't actually have leather seats. It's leather adjacent. Now, in terms of new competition, this will, this is expected to be dropping towards the latter portion of 2024. And so we are going to see a lot more car companies introduce their electric compact SUVs even though it's kind of contradictory considering all of the hype that much of the electric sector has died down and that is without stating the elephant in the room which is tesla tesla has absolutely taken over the market and i will continue to say it and say it again is that they are an absolutely brilliant marketing branding company and because of that and because of the deals they have made with the rental car companies a lot of tesla scalability is undeniable so in this case, I don't think that this is going to hit head to head per se with the Tesla Model X as well as the Tesla Model Y. But I do think that this is going to be a heavy competitor against the X3s and the, well, the iXs as they made it, as well as the EQ series for Mercedes and a lot of the electric cars that are going to come out from the Japanese manufacturers. But as we've seen, a lot of them don't really like electric vehicles anyway. So we're going to go ahead and toss them out. Now in terms of pricing and packaging it's really not that much different from 80,000 to 88,000 is really the range and it can go upwards of 100,000 for the four turbo model fully loaded decked out which is significantly more expensive than the GTS version which is the internal combustion edition and that usually starts around 88,000 and go upwards of 115 to 120,000 with options and there's not a lot of options for the Macan but you don't really need it in this particular rendition of Porsche and their compact SUVs, for the most part, you really just need to enjoy the driving experience. Turn up the radio and shut the f up. But it, the thing is, is that while they are admirable for where they're going, and this is groundbreaking, I wouldn't say groundbreaking, I'd say it's new and innovative, but for the Porsche brand, it can be said that they're a little late to the market and so i think that they will have a lot of success worldwide in terms of electric markets but i am very cons i won't say even concerned i'm curious about how this will play in the american market because if you are aware of porsche's reputation porsche is known for some of the finest cars known to men and definitely about the racing pedigree and so with that they come with a lot of really good build quality and material to match the performance that they're trying to market however they are pricey <laughs> they're expensive as and 
ultimately, a lot of people are still going to end up opting for your EQs and your IXs and, and all the other electric SUVs that are out there, such as the such as the Model X. Now, the only potential challenge that I really see this is, is that being a first year rollout, this is probably going to come with a lot more problems because this is their first transition. Hopefully Volkswagen as an entity has worked out a lot of the bugs. I won't mention that one time that they said they did and they didn't. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. But I won't mention that today. But what I will say is, is that if they haven't worked out a lot of the bugs, you'll probably see a lot of software bugs come out and it's usually going to be some minor part. It almost is never the mechanical parts that are the problem. It's always the software. So I can definitely see some bugs come out. But let's be honest, what car company hasn't had its issue? Anyway, overall, I think from a predicted sales standpoint, it will do okay initially. And as more people begin to enjoy it like they did with the Taycan, we can see something very similar. So with that being said, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the Porsche Macan EV because I think it's absolutely perfect considering where Porsche is. I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I think it's absolutely perfect. I would not doubt that a lot of people will enjoy it if they get in one. The Porsche Macan is the best seller for a reason. And so if they kept the same formula, I can definitely see them I can definitely see them repeating that formula and getting a very, very admirable and amicable solution out of the new EV transition. And this also will be the first start of where we see Porsche really engage us into their new electrification route as many manufacturers have adopted. But as I said before, with that being said, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Porsche Macan EV. If you think it's something to look forward to, if it's something aspirational, or would you just rather get a GTS? And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later.